So hello back again for the second part of the video on how to paint the dreads. Uh, I already done some extra work, but first I will explain to you what you need on your palette when you do this. Uh, you need a uh, um, cadmium red, um, like the last time. Cadmium red is the basic red. Uh, then of course we have uh, the ultramarine blue and um, burnt sienna over here. Uh, this is the kind of brown tone and over here we have uh, Mars yellow. Instead you can uh, of course use yellow ochre but Mars yellow is a bit more vibrant. Uh, this one is a particularly nice one if you want to make a nice warm tone. Look at it. It's very very warm. It's a uh, transparent oxide red, which you also can use when painting a portrait or skin tone. Uh, over here, over here, of course, we have titanium white and the medium, uh, the alkyd medium, the liquid original. Um, for the background, I didn't explain anything about the background because I've already done it and it's not that exciting to make a video about. Although, if you really want it, maybe I will do a video. Um, is, this is cadmium yellow. You can either use light or medium. Just not a dark one because it's, it's too orangey. And this is phthalo green. Very, very vibrant green. You see? It's really beyond emeraldish. Um, so this is this part of the palette I guess we will be using for today. This is just for doing the background, the reeds. Um, so I have already done some work on the dress to get started with the uh, with the shapes, you know, with with the pattern, because it's it's a lot of work and. Uh, and this part is the unexciting part. It's just uh, painting shapes you see in the on the photograph, or when you do it in real life, you you, you will see it in real life, of course. Um, this is just cadmium red with a tidbit of uh, um, ultramarine blue and a dark shade. It's a blackish shade. I mixed the ultramarine blue with a bit of burnt sienna which makes this dark mixture it's still a bit bluish though so you have to have more blue than um, burnt sienna for it so um, for now i will be zooming in on the painting and i will explain without my face You see, when you take a closer look at the painting, it doesn't look that great at all, you know. It looks like spots, like dirt, like we're really just not that exciting. I mean, for the most part, it's, it's, it's just dots of paint, daubs of paint on a, on a canvas. That's it. But now is the trick to make it look great from a distance, you know. That's 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 what we are dealing. So what I will be doing, I will put my palette over here like this. Uh, yeah, maybe I move it down a bit so that you can see this part also. Yeah. So I hope you can see it all. Of course, the liquid is running away from me. But yeah, I'll find a way to deal with that. Yeah. So I'm mixing a color, which is more into the purplish red, rosy tint, because it's 
aside from the red, there's also this color in the painting a lot. And as you add more colors, you can work more into detail than you did before. And that makes it quite interesting. Because most of the lines I painted already are quite thick. And um, when I look at it, it is great that I can just add paint and make sure that the paint that already is on the canvas gets harmonized, gets less thick, you know, so that there is uh, more feeling of detail. But there I must say, you don't necessarily have to have that much detail. Because it's... Unless you want it, of course, you know. That's the difference. If you're really into this, this hyper-realistic style that many great painters nowadays, especially the Spanish ones, uh, uh, are excelling in, then I'll recommend you to just go further than I do, you know? I mean, go further into the detail. Because I'm not, not really a hyper-realistic painter. Um, some people regard my paintings as, as being um, photorealistic, but in fact, when you look at them closely, you can really clearly uh, recognize all the brush strokes I'm doing, you know? As you see now, I'm not going that much into detail at all, mostly. So, this color, this in-between color, this rosy color leaves, gives me the opportunity to make the dark lines less intense. Yeah, we also have some, some darker color uh, I will be working on, but for now I'll just find spots where it needs this color. So it's, that's, that's more or less how I work. When I have a certain color, I find areas where the color is needed. You know? So it's, it's not uh, that I um, have this color on my palette and I mix every, I mix a new one every time I need a spot that needs another color. You know, it's it's uh, it's more pragmatic. I'm a pragmatic painter, I guess, to some extent. So uh, for the main part in, in this painting uh, is, is the cadmium red, the ultramarine blue, and the white. The other colors aren't used that much, you know, uh, for now. Uh, of course, I was talking about the transparent oxide red, but we need it in the, in the area where the sun is hitting the, the the fabric. So that's a different area. I will come to that later. So if you have, if you also have, uh, sometimes you make mistakes, like or you put a spot uh, uh, like this dark paint on the wrong on the, in the wrong area you can also just uh, mix a color that resembles the color of the dress you know the, the basic color I was talking about in the first video which is more purplish and just is it not purplish enough? Yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons why I like this, uh, how do you say, lo-fi videos. Because I, I don't, I'm not very experienced at making videos at all. And I don't want it to be this perfect, uh, shiny uh, tutorial in which I'll be 
just doing my stuff and you know telling how easy everything is well in fact it's better for you to see the mistakes i am making as a painter because i do that a lot i make lots of mix mistakes um, and it's it's not only about honesty because i like to be honest about stuff but it's also um the reality i wanted to show to you you know how i really paint not how i pretend to be the great painter which i apparently am not <laughs> so therefore you can see that this way i'm building up the painting in little dots um, There are also some darker colors and I'm trying to paint them now. Of course, if you make darker colors um, in the same in the same tonality and uh, you will find you just need less light. Um, one thing I was I was talking about was this red, which I mixed with um, a bit of blue to make it darker because it's in the shadow area, and this is very important. We sometimes have paintings in which the white of the dress or the clothes in general appears to be way lighter than the skin tones of course that can be possible very well but what also happens is that the skin appears to be lighter than the dress and that's well <laughs> i would say as far as i know and it's quite impossible <laughs> so yeah. you have to watch out with that that it's in context you know if the skin tone appears to be too light too bright which is which this right now in my painting I will need to darken it up later on so you know I'm dancing with my brush around a bit see spots that I want to correct and to refine yeah. then I, of course what's 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 the most important thing is go back and to look at it from a distance when you paint the dresses like this. And why is that? Well, you, when you are too close at the painting you just lose focus and that's not, not, not good. You have to see the overall, the whole, the whole thing. Um, so I'm just moving to this area now. Yeah. To show you how it works when you paint in the light areas. So, mixing, and the difference is, of course, when you mix, you will need this beautiful color. I have this dirty brush. It's a small one, it's a two. Yes, it's really fine. I just used flat brushes. Um, this was the case here. And then I look at the area and what I see is that there is there are lots of brown tones in it. So 
the dress is built up of two layers. There is one layer that is uh, the top layer with the uh, uh, pattern, and underneath is a layer of. Um, uh, I, I think it's not everywhere in the dress, but it's in the, uh, in the sleeve as well. It's uh, a kind of uh, lace. Yeah. So that's why you see very fine details there. The picture, I can show it over here. You see? This area. So again, you need this lace-like appearance. warm summery color as you can see there is no really there's not really any any pattern I'm painting over here and yeah it seems to have disappeared in the light um, you see some red spots, but the, the, the darker spots, I can I can tell uh, where they are. So, and as you know, what you can't see, you have to paint. Yeah. So in the end, what the idea is when you paint is the idea is that you have a result that looks credible to the eye. That's why I said you have to w walk back and look from a distance. Because when your nose is like 10 centimeters from the canvas all the time, uh, you, you won't see the whole picture and uh, the result might get, get lost in translation because you are more focused on details. And focusing on details is good, but I would recommend that for a later stadium. Not right now. It's not the moment to focus on details. So this is a nice warm area. Over here you have this this um, this. I think it's it's a fold, so it's it's darker but not too dark. So you make it a bit lighter, a bit warmer. To uh, over here it's getting really dark. So, um, there is just one other spot I wanted to show you, and this is in this area over here. Yeah. Although I have to hold the pellets for that, because otherwise you can't see. I don't know if you can see there. Right? There is a spot where there is very much light coming in. Okay. So you really have to use pure white. And you can add a bit of... Transparent oxid red for the warm. is almost like a glowing area that separates the parts in the sunlight from the parts in the shadow. And this glowing area you can make more glowing by using lots of transparent oxid red. Of 
thought you need some red at some point, but it's since the light is so strong, you can add a lot of white. Maybe some transparent oxide of course. In this case, the color will use its will lose its um, its. Uh, how do you say it? Its luminosity, I think, because the light is way too strong. Yeah. So, well, that was some explanation. Of course, as I already told you, I'm not the professional YouTube guy who makes uh, some really great videos. Um, and I can tell it how I just screwed up the painting as well, you know. Look at that. That's life. Um, but still, maybe you learned something from it anyway. And maybe you even liked it. And maybe I'll make another video about the skin tones as well. Or, or maybe the hair. So thank you for watching. Goodbye.